Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel Immortal News. Today we'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always, we have special tributes in our today's top headline section. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin, thank you. Number 9. Suzanne Shepard, a remarkable talent in film and television. Suzanne Shepard celebrated for her roles in iconic films like Goodfellas and the acclaimed HBO series The Sopranos, passed away at the age of 89. While the cause of her death has not been disclosed, her granddaughter Isabel confirmed the news. Shepard's death marks the end of a glittering career spanning several decades in the acting industry. Born into a world of storytelling and drama, Shepard made a significant impact on both the big screen and in television. She's fondly remembered for her portrayal of Karen Hill's mother in Goodfellas, a film that featured stars like Robert De Niro, Ray Liotta, and Joe Pesci. Her performance in this classic Martin Scorsese film is etched in the memories of cinema enthusiasts. In television, Shepard is perhaps best known for her character Mary DeAngelis in The Sopranos, where she played the mother of Carmela Soprano, portrayed by Edie Falco. She joined the cast in its second season and remained a vital part of the series until 2007, contributing significantly to its success. Her acting repertoire extended beyond these two renowned roles. She appeared in films like Mystic Pizza, Uncle Buck, and Requiem for a Dream. Her more recent works included appearances in Where is Kyra, Furlough, and The Week of, demonstrating her versatility and commitment to her craft. Suzanne Shepard's legacy extends beyond her filmography. She was also an accomplished theater director and acting teacher, influencing generations of actors with her wisdom and experience. Her departure leaves a void in the acting world, but her performances continue to inspire and entertain. Tribute to Suzanne Shepard. Number 8. Abe Stoklasa, a resonant voice in Nashville songwriting. Abe Stoklasa, a distinguished Nashville songwriter and musician, passed away at the age of 38 on November 17. His cause of death remains undisclosed. Stoklasa, a native of Princeton, Missouri, began his music journey early, playing in his father's band from the age of six. Growing up, he was influenced by icons like Elvis, Merle Haggard, The Beatles, and James Taylor. Stoke Lassa moved to Tennessee during his teen years and studied at Belmont University in Nashville. He then played steel guitar for David Nail's road band and briefly pursued a graduate degree at the University of Miami. His career took a significant turn when he joined Billy Currington's band, contributing to the 2011 Going Coastal Stadium tour with Kenny Chesney. In 2013, Stoke Lassa decided to focus on songwriting collaborating with Nashville legends like Mike Reed and Mark D. Sanders. He penned hits like Chris Lane's Fix, Tim McGraw's Portland, Maine, and Lady A's Ocean. His songwriting prowess was evident in tracks like Charlie Worsham's The Beginning of Things, which showcased his ability to weave complex, multi-layered lyrics. Stocklis's contributions to Charles Kelly's 2016 solo album, The Driver, were significant, featuring tracks like Leaving Nashville, and the Grammy-nominated title song. His talent was not only recognized in his music, but also in his character. His friends and colleagues remember him as hilariously witty, principled, and deeply caring. Abe Stoke Lassa leaves behind a legacy of musical innovation and emotional depth, having enriched the Nashville music scene with his unique talent and dedication. His sudden departure is a significant loss to the music community, and his influence will resonate for years to come. Tribute to Abe Stoklasa. Number 7. Daisaku Ikeda, a visionary leader in global Buddhism. Daisaku Ikeda, the influential and long standing spiritual leader of Soka Gakkai, Japan's largest religious organization, passed away from natural causes at the age of 95. 
His death marks the end of an era in the spread of Buddhist thought and the influence of Soka Gakkai both in Japan and across the globe. Born in Tokyo on January 2, 1928, Ikeda was the fifth of eight children in a family that ran a small seaweed firm. His journey with Soka Gakkai began in 1947 when he met Jose Toda, the then leader of the organization, who became his mentor. In 1960, Ikeda succeeded Toda as president of Soka Gakkai, embarking on a mission to expand the organization's influence. Under his leadership, Soka Gakkai experienced significant growth and innovation, engaging actively in cultural and educational endeavors worldwide. Ikeda's work in spreading Buddhist teachings was marked by his travels to over 50 countries for discussions with global leaders, including Zhou Enlai and Mikhail Gorbachev. He also founded Soka Gakkai International in 1975 and served as its honorary president, contributing to the organization's presence in 192 countries with 12 million members. A prolific writer, Ikeda published several books on Buddhism, engaging in dialogues with intellectuals and penning the 12-volume novel, Human Revolution. He was instrumental in founding the precursor to Japan's Komeito political party in 1964, showcasing his influence in both religious and political spheres. Despite facing criticism and controversy, Ikeda remained steadfast in his teachings, advocating the power of the Lotus Sutra and the ability to overcome life's difficulties. His philosophies and leadership significantly shaped Soka Gakkai's direction and growth. Ikeda is survived by his wife Kaneko and sons Hiromasa and Takahiro. His legacy as a visionary in the world of Buddhism and his contributions to global interfaith dialogue and cultural exchange will continue to resonate. Tribute to Daisaku Ikeda. Number 6. Ruud Giels, a prolific goal scorer and Dutch football icon. Ruud Giels, a legendary Dutch football striker, passed away at the age of 75. Renowned for his prowess as a goal scorer, Giels had an illustrious career playing for top clubs like Ajax, Feyenoord, PSV, and the Netherlands national team. He stood out as a remarkable striker, becoming the top scorer in the Eredivisie five times during his career. Giels began his professional journey in the 1960s with Telstar, subsequently playing for a succession of clubs including Feyenoord, Go Ahead Eagles, Club Brugge, Ajax, Anderlecht, Sparta Rotterdam, PSV, and NAC Breda. He earned 20 caps for the Dutch national team, contributing significantly to each team he played for. Giels was particularly successful at Ajax, where he scored 153 goals in 166 matches between 1974 and 1978. His goal-scoring feats led him to win the Eredivisie top scorer title in 1975, 1976, 1977, 1978, and 1981, a record unmatched by any other player in Dutch football. In total, Giel scored 252 goals in 360 Eredivisie matches. Despite his absence in the final, he was part of the Feyenoord team that won the Europa Cup one in 1970. With Ajax, he clinched the national title in 1977. Giel's participation in the 1974 World Cup with the Netherlands was significant, although he did not play a minute in the tournament. Post-retirement, Giel's pursued a quieter life as a painter, expressing a preference for a life away from the limelight and media attention. Tribute to Rude Giel's. Number 5. Robert Filibosian, a controversial figure in LA's legal history. Robert Filibosian, a significant figure in Los Angeles County's legal and political landscape, passed away at the age of 83 on November 13. His tenure as Los Angeles County District Attorney from 1981 to 1984 was marked by high profile cases and controversies that left a lasting impact on the county's judicial system. Philip Ocean's journey in law and politics was grounded in a strong academic background. He earned his BA in history from Stanford University and his JD from Southwestern Law School. In 1968, 
he was admitted to the California State Bar, paving the way for his future in law and governance. Appointed as Los Angeles County District Attorney in 1981, following the election of his predecessor John Van de Kamp as Attorney General of California, Philip Ocean's tenure was notable for his involvement in the infamous McMartin preschool trial. This case, fraught with controversy, saw one of the prosecutors, Glenn Stevens, leave in protest, accusing Philip Ocean of withholding evidence and lying to keep the accused in jail. This incident cast a shadow over Philip Ocean's career, particularly as it coincided with his unsuccessful bid for re-election. After his time as district attorney, Philip Ocean transitioned to a legal career with the law firm of Shepard, Mullen, Richter, and Amp Hampton, where he served as of counsel. This role allowed him to continue his engagement with the legal field away from the political spotlight. Philip Ocean's career, marked by both achievements and controversies, remains a significant chapter in the legal history of Los Angeles County. His impact on the county's judicial proceedings and the lessons drawn from his tenure continue to resonate in the legal community. Tribute to Robert Philibosian. Number 4. Michael E. Fox Sr., a philanthropic pillar of Silicon Valley. Michael E. Fox Sr., a revered philanthropist and prominent business leader in Silicon Valley, passed away at the age of 87 due to respiratory complications. Known for his influential role in the region's political and nonprofit sectors, Fox's legacy extends far beyond his professional achievements. Fox, alongside his wife Mary Ellen, founded Emmy Fox and AMP Company in 1965, growing it into one of the county's largest beverage distributors. His impact, however, was most deeply felt through his extensive philanthropic work. His advocacy spanned a variety of causes, from education to health to faith-based initiatives, demonstrating his commitment to making a tangible difference in the community. His son, Michael Fox Jr., CEO of Goodwill Silicon Valley, praised his father's ability to bring together key figures from various spheres to address complex issues. Fox Sr.'s Jesuit education and Catholic faith were central to his life's work, earning him two papal awards for his service and dedication. Fox Sr. also held significant roles in education, including chairing the Board of Regents for Santa Clara University and serving on the Board of Regents for Bellarmine College Preparatory. His wife Mary Ellen fondly remembered his curiosity and passion for life, even in his final days. The Fox home was a hub for notable figures, including former President Jimmy Carter, former First Lady Rosalind Carter, former President Bill Clinton, and Vice President Kamala Harris. Fox Sr.'s skill in fundraising was evident when he chaired the United Way of Silicon Valley, raising nearly $15 million for the organization. Survived by his wife, six children, and 16 grandchildren, Michael E. Fox Sr.'s legacy is a testament to the power of selfless service and community engagement. His contributions to Silicon Valley and beyond will continue to inspire future generations. Tribute to Michael E. Fox. Number 3. Nan Whitcomb, a poetic voice and cherished broadcaster from Adelaide. Nan Whitcomb, celebrated for her evocative poems published as The Thoughts of Nanushka and a prominent figure in broadcasting and television in Adelaide, South Australia, left an indelible mark on the worlds of literature and media. Her simple yet profound poems, her engaging presence on radio and TV, and her contributions as a writer and raconteur made her a beloved personality both locally and internationally. Whitcomb's journey into the public eye began with her training as a nurse at the Adelaide Children's Hospital. Her career took a turn when she joined Australian National Airlines as a hostess in 1950, a role she held for 23 years. This experience provided rich material for her memoir, Up Here and Down There, offering insights into the early days of air hostessing. In the 1970s, Whitcomb ventured into broadcasting, hosting talkback radio on Adelaide's AM station 5 DN Cruise 1323 
alongside co-host Ken Dickin. Her foray into writing included script writing for reviews and the The Mavis Bramston Show, marking her as a versatile and creative talent. Her poetic works, particularly The Thoughts of Nanushka, first self-published in the 1970s, resonated deeply with readers around the world. The series, encompassing multiple volumes, featured poems that were heartfelt and relatable, touching on themes of love, loss, and the human experience. Her poem, To Mourn Too Long for Those We Love, gained notable recognition when it was read at the funeral of NXS lead singer Michael Hutchins. Nan Whitcomb's legacy as a poet, broadcaster, and author remains a cherished part of Australia's cultural heritage. Her ability to connect with people through her words and on-air personality made her an enduring figure in the hearts of many. Tribute to Nan Whitcomb. Number 2. Luis Lorraine, a trailblazer for LGBT rights in Chile. Luis Lorraine, a prominent Chilean LGBT rights activist, passed away from blood cancer on November 17 at the young age of 42. Lorraine's unwavering commitment to equality and his impactful advocacy work have left an indelible mark on the fight for LGBT rights in Chile. In 2013, Lorraine succeeded writer Pablo Simonetti as president of Fundación Iguales, a leading LGBT rights organization in Chile. Despite facing personal health challenges including two kidney transplants, Lorraine spearheaded the campaign for the approval of a civil union law in Chile, a significant achievement in a country known for its conservative views. Under Lorraine's leadership, Fundación Iguales also fostered dialogue and cooperation with women's and indigenous groups, emphasizing the intersectionality of social justice movements. His efforts in promoting diversity and inclusivity were recognized internationally, earning him a place among the top 50 diversity figures in public life by The Economist in November 2015. Lorraine held a degree in engineering from Pontificia Universidad Católica de Chile and a master's degree in international relations from Sciences Po. Beyond his activism, he was also known for his work as a model. In 2017, Lorraine ventured into politics, announcing his candidacy for deputy in the parliamentary elections for District 10. Initially supported by the Citizens' Party and the Future Sense Coalition, he later ran as an independent within the center-right Chile Vamos Coalition, backed by political evolution. Luis Lorraine's death is a significant loss to the LGBT community and the broader human rights movement in Chile. His courageous advocacy, impactful leadership, and relentless pursuit of equality for all will be remembered and celebrated. Tribute to Luis Lorraine. Today's top headlines. News 1. New York City is in mourning after the sudden passing of Frederick Whiteside, a dedicated EMT and 22-year veteran of the FDNY. Whiteside, aged 43, tragically suffered a heart attack while serving at a 911 dispatch center in the Bronx. Mayor Eric Adams and Fire Commissioner Laura Kavanaugh publicly acknowledged the loss, with Adams describing it as a heartbreaking loss for the city. Whiteside's commitment to his role was evident in his over two decades of service, reflecting his unwavering dedication to helping others in need. Whiteside leaves behind a daughter, his mother, and a brother, who along with the city mourn a devoted public servant and a cherished family member. His death underscores the often unseen risks and challenges faced by emergency responders. News 2. Jim Southworth, the esteemed cinematic animation lead for Baldur's Gate 3, passed away at 56 after battling cancer. He was a pivotal figure at Larian Studios, contributing significantly to the game's highly acclaimed cinematics. Larian Studios' James Austin paid tribute, saying, Jim loved making games and we loved making them with him. We will miss him greatly. Colleagues remembered Southworth as more than just a professional mentor but also a father figure and friend. Southworth's influential career included work on various projects, 
from MMO Boundless to the animated series The Animals of Farthing Wood. His five-year tenure with Baldur's Gate 3 was instrumental in earning the game several accolades, including seven Golden Joystick Awards. He is survived by his wife Lindsay and three sons. Southworth's legacy continues in the gaming world, marked by his passion and dedication to his craft. News 3. Taylor Swift postponed her Saturday concert in Rio de Janeiro following a tragic incident where a 23-year-old fan, Ana Clara Benavides Machado, passed away at her Friday night show. Swift expressed her devastation on Instagram, stating, It is with a shattered heart that I say we lost a fan earlier tonight. Extreme temperatures in Rio, under a heat alert with forecasts of 96 degrees Fahrenheit, raised safety concerns. Machado, who felt unwell during the concert, received immediate medical attention but unfortunately did not survive. Swift's Eras Tour performance on Friday witnessed her concern for fans' well-being as she offered water to the crowd. Rio Mayor Eduardo Paez called the young woman's loss unacceptable, prompting an investigation into the circumstances. The Saturday show's postponement comes with increased safety measures, including additional water points and medical support. The status of Swift's Sunday concert remains uncertain, with Swift prioritizing fan safety and mourning the loss. News 4. Amy Dowden, a fan favorite on Strictly Come Dancing since 2017, has been forced to withdraw from the show's current season due to a fractured foot. This comes after Dowden's brave fight against stage 3 breast cancer and her recent completion of chemotherapy. Dowden, known for her vibrant spirit and resilience, expressed her heartbreak on Instagram, stating her plans to dance in the Strictly Ballroom are no longer possible. Despite not competing, she has been a vital part of this season, engaging in non-competitive segments and hosting the Gamey with Amy mini-episode. Fans and the Strictly community have shown immense support for Dowden, praising her courage and contribution to the show. As she focuses on recovery, Dowden remains an inspirational figure in the world of dance and beyond. News 5. Jean Passos dos Santos, a well-known beauty influencer and mother of two, tragically passed away at 34 after complications from sickle cell anemia. Jean was celebrated for her engaging content on beauty, decor, and travel. Her sudden demise has left her online community and family in shock. Hailing from Salvador, Brazil, a city with a high prevalence of sickle cell anemia, Jean battled with this inherited disease, which causes red blood cells to curve leading to severe health complications. Despite the challenges, she was a beacon of inspiration to many. Sickle cell anemia disproportionately affects black individuals, comprising about half of Salvador's population. The disease has limited treatment options, with bone marrow transplant being the only known cure, albeit with low donor match chances and high surgical risks. Jean's passing highlights the need for increased awareness and medical research for this life-threatening condition. Number 1. Rick Ahern, the masterful advance man of presidential politics. Rick Ahern, a seasoned strategist in Republican presidential politics, passed away on November 14 at a hospital in New Bedford, Massachusetts, at the age of 74. His death was caused by cardiac arrest following several surgeries. Ahern's legacy as an adept advance man on the campaign trail and in the White House spanned half a century and included service to every Republican president from Richard Nixon to Donald Trump. Born in Boston on November 6, 1949, Ahern was the son of a Boston City Council president. He initially began his political journey as a Democrat, switching allegiance in 1972 to the Republican Party. He became a crucial part of President Ronald Reagan's team in the 1980 campaign and was renowned for his versatile role in organizing and managing presidential appearances. Ahern's skills were a blend of meticulous planning, logistical coordination, and public relations, vital for enhancing the president's image and agenda. Ahern was part of a critical moment in history, being the lead advance representative for Reagan during the 1981 assassination attempt. He played a significant role in administering first aid to James S. Brady and insisting on a change in the hospital destination, a decision that proved critical for Brady's survival. His dedication to politics was evident even after Reagan's death in 2004, where he oversaw the funeral arrangements. 
Ahern's suggestion to keep Reagan's boots scuffed but not dusty for the riderless horse in the funeral procession reflected his attention to detail and reverence for the presidential legacy. Tribute to Rick Ahern.